So this is the Galaxy Book 2 Pro. You get Intel i7 12th gen, 21 hours of battery life and just 0.87 kgs weight and lots of stuff. And while we open the box, the list of ultra books or really good notebooks in Windows is quite limited. By the way, the laptop comes in this way. Oh, also this video is made in collaboration with Samsung, but we'll do a more practical video, you and me exploring this laptop. And as you can see, the box is compact and the laptop is even more compacter, if that is a word. And you get a 65 watt power adapter, PD charger, USB C to C cable, few paperwork. Now what's impressive is, look, look at the width of the laptop. It's just 11.2 mm. I'll keep this pencil here. It's almost about the same width. And that's not the best part. The best part is you get a USB A 3.2 port. 3.5 mm headphone jack and a micro SD card slot. By the way, it supports up to 2 TB micro SD card. Also on this side, you have a full size HDMI port as well as USB type C port and another USB type C Thunderbolt port. So that proves you can put ports and still make laptops thinner, lighter as air, if you know what I mean. And the laptop weighs about 878 grams. That's like super light. Just to give you context, this is the MacBook Air M1 and it weighs about 1.27 kgs. And honestly, a confession, I've been using the laptop for about three to four days now. And every time I open it, I'm a bit scared that I might break it. But see, it's all rigid and fine. Now, the thing is, the color of the laptop is white and like every white thing, be it shoes, clothes, they do look good at the start, like really good. But if you're someone like me who eats and types with the same hand, you should get the graphite or black one. To me, that looks more dope. Now, I love when smartphone companies make laptop because ecosystem thing. Like, let me show you a really cool thing. Now, I have the Galaxy Buds 2 and it is connected to the Samsung laptop. So now the video that I'm playing on the Samsung laptop, the audio is coming through the Galaxy Buds 2. And now if I take my Samsung smartphone, let me just make a call. So that's the call and see, I have the option and I just tap it. And now my call is switched to the Galaxy Buds 2 and the video here is paused. See, it seamlessly switches between all the Samsung devices. You know what would be a really good video? The Android ecosystem that no one talks about. Right? Right. Ah, we'll show Mrinal and his ecosystem. 5,000 likes and we do the Android ecosystem video. And even subscribe for that video. And this is an Intel Evo laptop, but I noticed that you can open it with one hand like quite easily. But the wake up is a bit slow. Like, see, it's still under one second, but this can be fixed with an update. Also, you get a fingerprint scanner, which as you can see is quite fast. Now you're looking at a 60 Hertz 1080p, 13.3 inch AMOLED display. Now in terms of brightness, in normal mode, you get about 370 nits. And if you go to HDR mode, it's 500 nits. Now you would be like, Pratik, my phone supports like 1000, 1200 nits. What is this 500 nits? Well, the bigger the display is, the bigger the pixels are and the more light they throw at you. So 500 nits generally would be as brighter as your smartphone display. And as you can see, there is a big bright studio light behind me. And now let me minimize and go to the desktop and I'll increase the brightness to 100%. So you can see a bit of glare, like I can see a bit of glare, but still the display is bright and sharp that it shouldn't be a problem to read what's there on the screen. Like you can easily use it indoors. Also see here, you can go on and turn HDR. And now if I go to YouTube, I can watch HDR videos. Like damn, that's bright. And funny thing, if I remove the charger, HDR is turned off. If I plug it back in, it works. Battery optimization. Also, Samsung claims that this is a very quiet keyboard. Now, I didn't find any problems typing on it and this is not a full-size keyboard. I liked the key travel. It is like about 1 mm. Now, I often notice that while typing, when I hit enter with my tiny pinky finger, it often misses the enter, so I have to hit it with more force. Also, you get a white backlit keyboard and hold on, it automatically turns on in the dark. Alexa, turn off studio lights. And you can adjust the keyboard brightness on three levels, like 30, 60, 100. Also, you get five watt AKG speakers. Now, the speaker, listen to this. So it is loud enough for a small room and one single person, like your bedroom, bathroom, wherever you listen to it. But due to the small size or form factor of the laptop, 
The speakers are a bit low for a hall or a larger room. Now, one thing that got me really excited is Intel i7 1260p. Like there are very few Intel 12th gen laptops in the market in India as of now. Now, the laptop comes with 16 GB LPDDR5 RAM. Oh, let's check if it is upgradable. Okay, the RAM is not upgradable, it's soldered, but you can upgrade the SSD. The base variant has 512 GB SSD, but you can expand it to 1 TB. The larger 15.6 inch has one extra SSD slot, but look at the battery size of this thing. Like half of the laptop is just battery. And then you have this tiny fan. Now for people who don't know, Intel 12th gen is quite different from 11th gen CPU. So basically you have 12 cores in this machine. Eight cores are for efficiency or you call it E cores and four cores are for performance or P cores. Now you would be like, what's P, what's E? Well, see, this is P core, this is E core. And just like your smartphone, both of them will run at different frequencies. Like the P core can go up to 4.7 gigahertz, whereas the E core can go up to 3.4 gigahertz. Now you would be like Pratik, that's more complicated now. So many cores. Well, see the E core can handle all these background threads. Here you see tasks while taking very less power. Whereas if you want to game or just do Photoshop, the performance core comes in to give more power and performance. Now I did some benchmarks to show you. This is the Geekbench score. This is the Cinebench score. I also downloaded Counter-Strike and see here. So due to the sleek profile, it's not built for gaming, but if you want to casually game at low settings, you can get an average FPS of around 59 which is not bad. Now, Samsung claims you get 21 hours of video playback or battery life, which to be honest is crazy battery life for a Windows machine. So the thing is, we are already late. What we'll do is we'll do something practical. Like I'll run a 1080p YouTube video on it for the entire night. Brightness set to 50% and volume to 50%. Let's start the stopwatch and I'll sleep and wake up in between to see the battery drain. So I waited the entire night and also next day in the morning and finally the battery has died. It went off like 12 hours, 11 minutes, 35 seconds, which is massive for a laptop. Now I hadn't opened any tab or used the laptop. So if you run an offline video, the battery life should be a bit better around 15 to 16 hours. And if you browse the web and work, it should come down to 10 eight, nine to 10 hours. Now the 21 hour battery life claim will work if you turn off the Wi-Fi, put brightness to 10%, which I don't find practical. I found this more practical. You get a 65 watt charger, which charges 40% in 30 minutes. Now I didn't charge it from zero to hundred, but it should take roughly around two hours. That's my guess. And so you get a 1080p webcam and finally it's 2022 laptops should be coming with a 1080p webcam. And this is how the video quality and audio quality will be like we have turned off the studio lights and it's just one tube light. So you should have an idea. Also, Samsung has this studio mode where you can turn on auto framing and this thing should automatically zoom in, zoom out and follow me as I move. This is fun. It's a bit jarring, but it's actually nice. But I'm a simple man. I like normal mode. Now, Samsung has launched a bunch of laptops like, oh, this is the Galaxy Book 2 Pro model. It starts at 1,6990,000. But if you add just 8,000 rupees, you will get the i7 variant, which is the one I have. If you have the budget of an Ultrabook, you can consider it. There's also a budget variant called Samsung Galaxy Book Go, which comes with Snapdragon 7C. That starts at 38,990. You can consider that as well. On that note, this is Pratik signing off. See you pretty soon. Pew, pew, pew.